Hello. Hey, everybody. Welcome once again to another edition of the Riff On Podcast. It's episode 10, and it's been three months. I'd like to apologize. I'm not the only one that wants to apologize. I'm here with two good friends in the Riff On Podcast studios here in Colchester, Vermont. Who's here? Chocolate rain. (laughs) (laughs) That's third in the bag. Poor Uh, name. (laughs) Andrew James. And Mel Allen. Mel Allen. We've had so much fun catching up and talking about what we're going to talk about that we're half in the bag. Not really. (laughs) A third in the bag. A third? third, All right. We're only two. Like a quarter. Yeah, Yeah. like a quarter of a third in the bag. (laughs) Okay, okay. We're all all talked out. Now we don't even know what to talk about, right? (laughs) There's so many things to talk about. That is. We decided, I think, I'm pretty sure. Very, very, very maybe. Uh, Definitely maybe. Posi- Absolutely. Fully, completely, maybe? I'm currently nameless. That's another episode entirely. We're going to talk about podcasting. Yes. Because it's... I like podcasting. I do, too. I enjoy it. You know what I love? I love living in a culture where everything's on demand, and why can't I have my radio on demand as well? We're getting there, just like everything yeah. else. I mean, and, uh, to me, that's what podcasting is. It's like my radio on demand. Yeah, it is. And I just wish, coming from a radio background, I went to school to be a radio DJ, that there was more, and I actually worked in copyright and music publishing, so I understand why, and music licensing, that I actually want more on-demand podcasts that are music-related, that are maybe even a radio show that I could download. And we're probably going to get there. The Congress just signed a new music licensing streaming royalty act real recently. Changing things up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And so maybe we're getting there, but on demand with music involved, because I still love my music. That's, I love that. You know, I was being said, very excited. They, a uh, local DJ who is a friend of mine, who is a, who's just wonderful, got done working at one of the, one of the, local stations and uh he started pushing his podcast glow in the dark radio oh yes 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 and i was i was hoping he was gonna have some music ones because he always mike luoma always puts out the best end of the year mixtapes so if you can if you can find mike luoma's mixtape he does a great end of the year and just kind of uh recaps what's gone on in music and we might as well plug him because you know him mel i I know know him. him yeah uh, Mike Luoma, who's now on WBKM.org every day, noontime on. Yeah. That's his latest gig, but was on the point for years and years and years after being on IZN. IZN and that, yeah. He's a fixture in Vermont radio. Uh, does a podcast. Does He's a Glow sci-fi dark, writer. Yeah, Glow in the Dark Radio. you got to check it out. He's got uh, Vatican Assassin. He's got Alibi Jones. And he's got a bunch of other ones, but... Uh, Really good stuff. If you like sci-fi, it's really good. But I would love, I was really hoping to hear some on-demand music. It's a licensing thing. And you and I, or no, sorry, I've talked about it with Polly V. We're going to be all over the place, I think, on this episode. You think so? I'm pretty sure. (laughs) Pretty sure. So our friend Polly V, I've been on his podcast before, and we've actually talked about music and and licensing and usage and copywriting and what have you. And like I said, I have a background. For three years, I worked in music copywriting and licensing, so I'm very aware of the usage of music. And he's basically like, hey, at our size let's say for the number of listeners that we would have you know no one's going to really come after us let's say for music licensing but you use copywriting and you or use a copywritten song you maybe talk over it a little bit you know you don't play the whole song so that being said there's a ways to get around it but uh i love music that's my background i went to school to be a radio dj in 93 to 94 interned at wizn mel you worked at wiz you work at wizn and you yeah. i was gonna say we have there. a current radio the dj to mel. Yeah. that that's that's get, true that but you there. were you were at izn about the same time ish ish mid 90s when i was you were kind of around weren't you around there yeah it was like kind of crossing didn't over cross in the IZN zone uh, we i crossed over actually mike luam and i have, have crossed paths uh couple of times better than radio, so. crossing swords yeah i don't no. never cross streams or swords so <laughs> and i and <laughs> i think clean. you must have worked with uh my my co-host of the local haunt, oh, the local carrie haunt, henry yeah. carrie is awesome i know i love carrie such a sweetheart she is currently at the point she is currently at the point 
so and so Mel and I have a radio background. What college do it? I've been on WEZF, actually the former Star ninety two point nine. I was on overnights there. I did four years at WWPV St. Michael oh, College Radio. Uh, volunteering radio is still my background where I love to play music and I realized that um, I never wanted to basically uh, let that breathe. <laughs> compromise my my taste in music I, I should say because I'm a rather snobby ish music fan for those that don't know me um, for those that know me are not surprised at all but uh, I just decided at one point that I could not really compromise you know really work for commercial radio ever again because i want to play what i want to play and so i i got away from commercial radio so can i ask you a quick question sure. i didn't realize you worked at this at uh star mm-hmm. can you introduce me to delilah because she sounds hot she sounds like a cougar Love right songs in but night. believe it or not she's a nationally syndicated no i know she's radio, nationally but. syndicated because where else do you for 30 years that she's been on air. Where else can you hear Wilson Phillips? Hold every on, really. single. So, every time. Star. Every single time. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, I actually worked at Star as, uh, as well for uh, a, a Can minute. you introduce me to Delilah? Uh, unfortunately. So when I was there, I, here. I oh. can't remember <laughs> the programming. Well, I do remember the format. It was adult contemporary at the time, but this is what happens in, in radio. So I go to school to New England School of Broadcasting in Bangor, Maine. It's now the New England School of Communications to be a radio DJ. And I come out of school and I was interning for Corman the Coach in the morning back when they were in WIZN pulling music and having a good time. It's how I knew Duke, the owner of Handy's Lunch yeah. in downtown Burlington. Uh, the Rocker, the original, you know, one of the original Bill producers, Corbeil. Bill Corbeil. Uh, Ian Kelly was there. Oh, uh, a great right. morning show. I mean, Corman the Coach was they were incredible. I, I was mean, their producer a little bit later on, and they, yeah, you know, it was it, still good. It was phenomenal. I mean, I, we, good. it was, we had so much fun, so much fun. And uh, I remember Rich Haskell, who is still, of course, around the Burlington Airwaves, um, encouraged me to go answer an ad for WEZF overnight. So I was doing that on basically Friday and Saturday nights. And I was playing a lot of, I remember, uh, Dion Ferris and, uh, Christopher Cross, and so to speak, there was, you know, you had your playlist that you you played through, and it was not a lot of fun, but it was at least decent. There were some decent songs, and I remember um, the program manager, the st- essentially the station manager brought me in one day and said, well, we, we hired my sister's s- son, my nephew. Um, I want you to teach him everything you know. And I was like, thought to myself, I just... This is not going well. Went to radio school for this. <laughs> I just paid a chunk of change to yep. get my radio certificate. And then you realize when it boils down to it, as long as you know when to say the call letters and know what you're doing, your ins and outs, it's it's a teachable skill. But in one night, I taught this gentleman. And that is Jamie Polly. For anybody that may know Jamie Polly, he does yep. the game shows. Is that Vermont I Game Shows? Know, Works yeah. with Tim Cavanaugh, Works right? Tim Cavanaugh, yeah, yeah. LNS crew. You know, the Burlington yeah. radio scene is pretty small, but I was with EZF. But I literally came in one night and they changed music formats and they said, We dropped everything under so many beats per minute. And tonight we actually don't want you to talk because we're in this transition time right then. And I think I remember. Were you allowed to beatbox? I don't even try that now. No <laughs> I'm matter just how many wondering. Beers I'm just so. wondering, like, you can't talk. Okay. I can I get around this. I don't beatbox <laughs> on air. <laughs> I don't beatbox on air because I, I don't drink typically right. uh, when I'm on air. But you know, I, I quit on the spot, and I don't think I've done commercial radio since then. Actually, in o four ish, as I was getting ready to move to Pennsylvania, I was in talks with Corm to go work at Champ, uh, as they were well, they were still Champ, they were still Classic Rock Radio, and I was actually training on the system and was about to perhaps go work there when they're Clear Channel owned. And um, that's, that's, that's when I worked there. That yeah. fell through. Unfortunately, well, I moved to Pennsylvania, and I, uh, that was after doing four years at, at WWPV, and, and that was a great time. So anyways, that's a little bit about my radio you know, experience. So um, I guess, really, if we want to talk about radio experience before we start talking about podcasting experience, we can talk about your radio experience real quick, Mel, because... Oh. Got Andy, it. do you have any radio experience? Can we just bypass you here? Uh, you we can. I uh, with with Citizen Bear and the All Stars, the local bands that I'm in. Uh, you, we you we do play. I play music. Oh sure. I, mean, I play music on the radios. Yes, but that's, that's it. That's, that's I true. don't talk on the radio. No, you. you well, you did. You, you've talked. I mean, I have been interviewed when you were. Yeah. I have been interviewed. Yeah. yeah. I've heard you. 
I know you. I know it. You have the voice for radio, or you've got a voice. You know, you have the face for radio yeah, too. Like we're all told. The face for radio. <laughs> so I started in radio when I was actually in high school, and this is going to make me sound old because it's a it's a it's a low number. And you are. 1987 was when I first turned on a microphone. Oh man, I was nine. Yeah, I was not. <laughs> um, I was, uh, gosh, what was I, 17, 16, something like that? Anyway, it was many years ago. And uh, it was not something that I thought I wanted to do because, uh, funny thing, a lot of people don't know about me, I actually stammered, I stuttered, uh, and I had a lisp. And a short time before this, I had actually gone through speech pathology and I tended to mumble at the time because I was embarrassed and I didn't want to do this in front of other people. But I was having a conversation with a couple of my buddies about music, funny enough, about like bands that we knew and like who basically were like the boy bands back in the punk era, you know, who were basically just assembled by labels. And so he's like, you guys know a lot about music to me and my two buddies. He's like, do you want to be on the radio? He's like, the local college station WJSC in Johnson, Vermont, we have a lot of openings and I can give you at least an hour to just talk about music and play some of the musicians that you like. And uh, so we go do all the training so we can read the numbers. You you know all about reading the meters. <laughs> the only thing the FCC care, cares now, about. Oh, that too. Yeah. Now basically you got to check it every three hours, but we used to have to check it at the top of the hour like and um, and make sure that everything was always in, in, in check and in parity and I actually had to take a test to get my license, and uh, now they just hand you a piece of paper that says you can broadcast, and you sign it. Um, and uh, so we did all this training, and then it comes time for us to be on the air, and the person who was sitting in front of the microphone just completely froze up. They didn't remember what buttons to put. Well, actually, it wasn't buttons. It was knobs. Um, and... So they just completely froze up. And I just remember the one thing that he kept drilling into my head was no dead air. No dead, <laughs> no dead air. air. Yeah. Dead air is so the worst. I jump in front of this friend of mine. He's on a chair with wheels on it. I push him out of the way. I crank the dial on the microphone. And I'm like, WJSE, we put the rock in the mountains, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, like, I'm me and here's my friends. And... We're going to talk to you about some of the musicians that we think are cool. And here's a song for you. And hit play on the record player and turn the microphone off. And I'm sweating bullets. And all of a sudden, I'm like, that was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> and I was I was unfortunately hooked. And I've been working. And yeah, I, uh, I, I was a producer of Corman the Coach in the Morning for, gosh, two and a half years, something like that. I've been on Classic Rock. I've been on uh, Top 40. I've been on... Uh, chart hit radio so you know i've been on adult album oriented uh stations and uh is that like i am i can my kids listen to the adult oriented yeah you know, stations? it's not like the theater that one. used to be here yep, in AOR colchester and, AAA and um yeah now i'm i actually am a, i'm part-time on a country station and i'm on a classic rock station all the time and every once in a while i do what is apparently the new oldies which is yeah. 80s music, new wave, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when they converted to that, and I was like, all right, these songs that grew up with are now deemed oldies. And they're like, no, 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 no. They're classic hits. But like, here's, the fir here's the really funny thing. My first job in professional radio was at an oldie station. And so I've come full circle. <laughs> <laughs> As one often does. Often does, yeah. So I can't get over it. What is, what's an adult sound station? Adult sound? Wait, what did you say? An adult? So there's a album oriented rock? Oh, okay. or adult, and, and adult oriented rock. <laughs> or album oriented rock, adult oriented rock. So the point actually, is, you know, 104.7 and yeah. the other ones in the area, uh, they kind of toe the line between AOR and AAA radio. And so they. Um, What's uh, the big leagues? Like, when do you get up to the big leagues after AAA? Is there a double A radio? <laughs> No, no. <laughs> that was good, though. That was good. Oh, uh, do we need a laugh track for this podcast? I think, I think. Uh, either that or a big stick. Crack. I, I'm gonna hit you with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be. There is a stick. Yeah. Let's get whacked with it. Can I just say, I actually, uh, if you can, 
Go grab the the Burlington beer, chunky and jelly. This is delicious. I do remember it having Honestly, it in the Big really Bombers. I I taste the jelly. I didn't taste it out of the Big Bombers. I taste the jelly in this one. I taste the jelly, and then the peanut butter comes in. Oh, the peanut butter is strong. Like, that's, that's good. It is like, very good. All of our podcasts should be sponsored by Vermont breweries because we do a pretty good job of drinking through them as we talk about. And and just letting about. people know uh, tonight we we've had. We've shared we share one beer just so everyone knows. Oh yeah, we're not we don't each have our own beer of the beer. We we split the beer. We're splitting right. them we're on, ways. Yeah. yeah, we're on beer three, but we, we had yeah. Mister Fox from the Farnham folks, which was actually which was, was good. Really good. It was good. It was yeah. very good. Red. And I'm not a huge red fan. And the uh, Prapa Ruby, is that how you say it? Prapa. Prapa. Oh yeah, Prapa. It's Prapa. Right. I thought it was Prapa. Prapa. Okay. I did too until I read it. It's proper, it's proper ruby from Foley's, proper. which it's a is proper a uh, ruby. Mm. weed IPA fermented with fresh ruby red grapefruit. And that was delicious. That was very yeah, good. Full, Foley's killing it. Foley's always on point. Yeah, yeah. they're doing yeah. well. Their production just increased immensely. But this and chunky and jelly, chunky and jelly. Mm. Mm. And jelly I have good. not had that in, at least out of the can for for quite a while. So I've never mm. had it out of the can. Yeah. So, yeah. we're hitting the can tonight. Love it, love yeah. it in the can. Right, so radio, terrestrial radio is, uh, you know, you, I think we've all heard that term. It's kind of going, well, we say it's going by the wayside. I keep going up and down with satellite radio. I only sign up when it's a super bargain because I'm not super impressed with, with XM and Sirius, unfortunately, but I'm still a, a radio music guy at heart. Um, what's funny is um, I used to talk a lot on the radio. When I'd open up, I did a radio show when I was in college. Mm -hmm. um, and it's great because my, my skimmer tapes are uh, still fun. I, I actually did it with my my um, my roommate at the time. Guy I, from I don't Callus Maine. I don't know your jargon. So what is a skimmer tape? It's called okay. air check tape. So yes. when you turn I don't on the know your jargon. Yes. When you turn on a microphone at a radio station, okay, it's automatically recorded. Now it used to be recorded to cassette tapes, and I actually found a box of my old cassette tapes, and then. We switched to them. DAT tapes, yep. and now it's actually all either wave or MP3. Or digital, yeah. So, so yeah. I have, I have now, I have like files from, you yeah. know. So, yeah, so yeah, so skimmers only turned on when your on-air light went on, which is when you turn on your mic. So my college roommate Dennis and I, who had a, a down east Maine accent, thick down east. He's, he, this guy wore like leather jackets, long hair, earrings. Great guy. I haven't seen him since college, but we had a really fun radio show that we called sight for sore ears and i remember coming back from college and just listening to my skimmer tapes with friends and they'd be like this is really fun and if we could hear the music it would be a lot more fun because we were playing a lot of decent stuff you could play whatever you wanted and so that's why when i actually did st michael's college radio from 98 to 2002 i would bring in um or I'd record the whole show, which that one would do, or I'd just turn the level all the way down so the mic would stay on, but the level was down, so my recording constantly ran. Yeah, so I'd actually record, record the, the music. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd also, would brought it, speaking of DAT, I would bring in my DAT recorder, digital audio tapes, and I would do that whole thing. So I still have hundreds of hours of uh, my radio show, which was called Let It Roll, which was basically the live music scene, jam, improv, groove, uh, I op I actually started right before Higher Ground originally opened 20 years ago, and it was ahead of Sirius XM, obviously, and well ahead of the, the Sirius XM jam on station. And I still think that my format, my diversity in 9802 beats the heck out of what Sirius does now, but I was playing... You know, fish. Actually, I always say one of my claim to fame was Paige McConnell called me up one day and thanked me for my kind words as I was talking about fish's uh, '97 <laughs> fall tour or whatever it was. But I would go record shows at higher ground, and the, the next day I'd be on the air and I'd be playing tracks from it. And uh, the first anniversary of Higher Ground, which was April of '99, um, not quite that poster behind me here that, of course, no one can see. Um, I actually made a best of year <laughs> one. Um, Higher Ground recordings that I gave to all four owners of the original Higher Ground from my radio show. That I, that I actually played it on the air on my radio show, recorded it all, and then gave it to them on copies on three CDs. That's actually, um, that's actually pretty cool. Like that, That's fantastic. But I still yeah. have one of these containers here. I don't think it's in there. It's probably in my closet right under my beer cellar. I still have all of my dat tapes and my cassette tapes from Let It Roll from four years worth of uh, music. And all the music is there. All the talking is there. So that... 
that's where I was going. Wow. This was I was sober at the time. Now uh, you took, maybe you took feeling the long way. I did take okay. the long way. I'm, I'm back around. <laughs> so I would only talk once every 45 minutes. So that was my thing. And it was on the tape flip. Yep. It, was, it was on my cassette flip. So I I started at noon. It was noon to three every Saturday. So at noon, I would talk for about five minutes. Front cell, talk about whatever. And then I would come back on at about 1241, back cell, all of my songs, talk a little bit more, go to a quick PSA, come back in, flip the tape during the PSA. And then do the same, you know, talk real quick. So when you listen back to yourself, I don't know, probably took you a little while, Mel, but you realize that, A, you don't like your voice. Not at all. Don't like hearing yourself. Took a while. And then you realize how much you talk. Yes. How ridiculously corny you may be about any jokes. Uh-huh. And <laughs> it doesn't really change, unfortunately, but I realize, wow, I talked a lot. And yeah. So I, so I became a live music DJ, really just weddings. I've done them on and off over the last 10, 12 years or whatever it is. So I never tried to be the prototypical wedding DJ where I talked too much. Because mm-hmm. it was, to me, the wedding DJ, it's not supposed to be about the wedding DJ. It's about the, I always say, the pretty lady in the white dress. It's yes. all about her that day. And if you take the attention away from her, you're not doing your job. So I never did. I never led the chicken dance. I never went around and made, you know, table sing about love like i never tried to take the attention away from having the party <laughs> having a good time I've, I've done the same thing and that's exactly what i do i like like literally make a mix cd of what the bride says she wants to hear and, and people all. people make requests and i go i'll put that on right after the bride's music is mm-hmm. done <laughs> that's your job you which gotta means know your bread and butter after i've left <laughs> so the big end around, you know, end around about this whole thing is so ironically, podcasts. If we want to get back around to it here, are about talking it's all really the time. Funny. Yeah, it's really funny. I mean, you have a couple of podcasts who do have some music in them, and I actually had a podcast for a while. Well, Grado Two, which now it's kind of more a video thing, but uh, you know, when I started out podcasting, it was uh, having local musicians on that kind of like were at all of the. What, intro what, what and, happened? Where, and middle points. Did you not get the invite, Andy? I think we talked about it. We did talk <laughs> about it. We did talk about it. And what happened is that your music was too good. Oh. <laughs> so it's like I have to play the whole thing. I can't just play a snippet. No, no, so. I'd love to date you, but you're <laughs> so, too good for me. Yeah. So I don't think you're we nice should. Guy. <laughs> you're a nice guy. Come on, just rough me up a little. We get, to, oh, we, we get to back up now, officially, though, because your history with podcasting, Mel, goes well back before me you know, us, yeah. what we're doing. And, and real quick, what I'm going to say is I took me so long because I always officially hated the term podcast and I still do. Yeah. And now people are shortening it to pod and it's not making it's, it any it's better any for better me. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it's, it's funny. Actually, you mentioned that because my podcasting goes back farther than even, um, I sometimes realize. So I first podcasted during operation desert storm and wow. it wasn't, a thing back then it wasn't it literally wasn't a thing it wasn't labeled i got a camera and i got a microphone and i got on yahoo instant messenger and there and at a will instant messenger and i was assigned onto both from different computers I, icq no oh, I remember not ICQ. At the time. <laughs> um, and here's the reason why because that was kind of looked at at the time as like whatsapp is now and yeah. so what i was doing is i was sending the audio and the video over Yahoo and AOL Instant Messenger to the troops who were over in Iraq and Afghanistan, etc., you know, over in the Middle East um, from the morning show that I was doing. And so we would record it and I would send it a link to the, uh, to the folks later. I built an FTP server on my own website and I sent it to the, uh, to the troops over there. So the audio would all be up there. And then I ended up somehow walking after I did Corman the Coach into a sports program where I was the host of it. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not the biggest sports guy. I love sports. I mean, I love watching sports. I love seeing them happen. But I don't remember the numbers. I don't remember the stats. I don't even sometimes remember who that guy was who hit the home run or who it was who, you know, caught that uh, – that, that, pass and and made the touchdown which was freaking amazing and he shouldn't have done it but here i was the only one who really knew how to run the board and get people in on the phone remotely and so we had this whole it was called sports talk with the chat pack and 
this whole crew of guys would come in with seven people and most of the time it wasn't all of them there was like five of us at most who would be there and we lost our spot on the air because some guy bought the airtime from the time for the time slot that we were on so we were like well you know what like i have all the equipment like let's just record it anyway and i found this place called blog talk radio and all of a sudden we had a 1500 to 5000 listens a week jeez i'm actually not kidding every episode within three to five days after that we would have this much and i was actually um headhunted by uh the william morris agency i was supposed to be the official podcaster for the lingerie football league oh what happened my partner called up the president of the lingerie football league apparently i'd put his um his contact info in a spreadsheet that he uh he pulled it up, and I guess, I don't know, he must have been drinking or something because he called him up and he said, we need more money. And here's the funny thing. We were supposed to do it without getting any money from them for the first three episodes because during the off season, they got three million visits to their website a day. During the on season, which we were supposed to do our podcast from the first day of their on season, they had 12 million visitors to their website a day. So I said to him, I'm like, look, if we have 5% of that traffic visit our podcast and listen to it and hear that pre-roll ad, we can quit our jobs. Literally, within days after launching, if we do this, we can quit our full-time jobs. Yeah, but can you imagine if that had happened? You wouldn't be sitting here in this basement with us. I wouldn't have ever met my wife. You wouldn't be drinking this delicious beer. I would beer. probably be... You'd be drinking scotch I'd, like a pretentious... Yeah. Or I'd be dead. Probably dead. Probably I would be dead. Oh, but Cocaine's a hell thing. of a drug. Here's the funny thing. like <laughs> The lessons that I learned from that made me realize that that was not at all the direction that I wanted to go. The lesson is you actually didn't quite finish the story. So, so he calls the owner. So he calls the owner. And he ends up calling the owner two more times after we had a conversation of, you need to lose that number, and you need to never, ever, ever call him again. And then he did two more times. And so he calls me up and he said, look, you are welcome. You have been nothing but professional. I produced all of these um, elements that their production team sent to me that they were like, here's what we want for our intros. You know, so I had literally all the elements every time we had a phone call every time we had you know a different segment when we had one of the ladies call in from lingerie football league i had produced everything it was all ready to go i'd built um i don't know if you guys remember flash but i had built a soundboard out of flash so that literally all i had to do is on my browser hit this and he said three days before we were supposed to do our first broadcast you need to lose your your co-host he's no longer part of the deal and i said in three days i don't know that i can do this and i said i know you guys had a number two that you were keeping in the wings and i i can't believe the words that i'm saying but in three days i cannot have somebody up to speed who knows this who i trust on the air you know to represent you guys to be on there with me so you pulled and out. I had to you pull pulled out. out. Oh man, no I one likes to pull out. Dude, I was. It was I would there. Like, I was inches away, and would have gone. Uh, probably been like, hey man, let's let's hop on the spirit of Ethan Allen. Let's just go for a little ride, and then probably push him off. <laughs> you know, Put on yeah. these cinder block boots, would you please? <laughs> Honestly, knowing what I know now, I totally would have done it. I would have been like, I will absolutely do this for you. I will find somebody, you, and I would have, and sure. I would. Hell yeah! Today I would not even a, not even a question. The but, first uh, time you told me that story, I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Well, that guy ended up buying his share of the company from me, and uh, it has dwindled into nothingness shortly. Oh, he bought your share. After. Yeah, because I was like, "I'm I'm never I'm never turning on a microphone with you again. I cannot trust you. Right? I cannot. You know, like you you cost basically." You know, it, it's it's hard to be like, I had a lottery ticket that almost won, right. but I did have a lottery ticket that almost won, 
and he took it out of my hands and ripped it in half. And he took it out of his, he took it out of your hands. He threw it on the ground. He stepped, he stepped on, on it. it. He peed, he peed on it. On it. <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 uh, can we say Duke on the podcast? To go oh, yeah. Duke on it. There was a Dukey involved. And then, yeah. when, then what he did is he, he grabbed that Dukey, threw it in a threw it in a bag, and then lit it on fire. He's like, <laughs> he called the shit poop. And and you know, here's the thing, man. Like, he couldn't help himself. Whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, long term, like, I am very happy with where my life ended up going as a result of that. It was, I was very unhappy, I will tell you, for a, a couple of months after that. Mm. But literally, it was like a month after that that I met the woman who I ended up marrying. So, okay, so how long ago was that then? So that was, jeez, wow, is that eight years almost? Eight years. Sheesh! I can't even believe it. Eight years. Well, it's easy to say that eight, nine years ago, podcast Sorry. was not on the tip of it wasn't 98% of the population's it. brain. I mean, 2010. I was, dating, I was dating my wife and she was like, I don't know about this guy. And I was like, no, no, he's always been, you know, he's a little bit of a flighty guy. You know, like he's always looking for the next big thing. I'm like, but we've got the next big thing. Like we are the next big thing. Like, you know, this is happening. Right. And she's like, I don't know. And man, that was one of the things that made me realize, man, she's got her pulse on people. <laughs> and I you need, should to, keep I need her. to hang on to that lady. Ever since. Yep. Yeah. As, as my uh, one of my best friends said to me when he met her, and I said, what do you think? And he said, what, are you waiting for her to meet the ne- next guy? Like, you meet, meet, meet the right guy? Like, what's going on here? What right. are you waiting for? Right. Well, and you can, you can actually talk about this, Andy, if you want. I mean, the reason, one of the reasons why podcasting is really just blown up over the last, well, say, eight years or so, is music delivery and um, in production delivery, and how different it is from the traditional norm of going into a studio and having things professionally done and having you know the necessary mediums to have uh, pieces broadcast like CDs, like. Okay, nobody can obviously see this, but Mel is sitting in front of my commercial CD releases. Of, this, is, know, eight, this is good CDs. radio right this here. This is good radio. Yeah, but it's good. This is, this is the good transition, though. So that changed Believe into... Me, it's all here. It is all here. So I remember Mel and when I was talking about Dats, I would... got Ja Rule in there. I, I do have Ja Rule. There's nothing wrong with that. because She's always no, on time. I have Ja Rule. That's, there's some good stuff. Yeah, y'all. So, no, that's a different song. Um, when I would go out and digitally record. So I remember... Uh, going to higher ground in 98 bring out my dat you know a big case for really ultimately a small recorder a very small music right with many many hours in it and you know by early 2000s to you know the mid 2000s things were starting to move to digital and that was like this is just crazy who wants to bring out a laptop because that's really what it was who wants to trust it you're now putting down you know gigabytes of of music of of data to uh your laptop and things like that but over these last 18 years how differently music delivery and vocal delivery and and data delivery has changed to now you know where do you touch tape anymore we were just talking about um wow, yeah. sound recording studios before we went on live here you know who's you know actually recording to tape i went to real to real real to real i actually <laughs> so when i went to radio school in 93 i did sound recording on the side and we did real to real tape and i learned how to splice that's how i learned to edit yeah that's how i learned to do production was on tape so everything and that's Crazy. now retro old school and desirable not to mention mm-hmm. by many bands that want to have that sound so a warm have, sound what have you, you know what have you seen i mean you've a been in a band sound. for many years now and you actually you never cut a cd can you talk about this you, i did i did <laughs> cut a, i did <laughs> cut a <laughs> cd uh citizen bear cut the carnival album back in 2010 Right around when podcasting started to really, kind of take really off. Be a thing, yeah. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is it's it's the technology and the connectedness I think that's really brought us to this point. Uh, and and I find that so if you go back to somebody like Bill Simmons and I, I love the Ringer Podcast Network. I really enjoy it. I like sports. I do retain. People's names and numbers, That's and good. I can tell That's a you. Good skill. Now that I know that, I can <laughs> tell you uh, who hit the home run and which inning and which pitcher they hit it off of, and which outfielder looked up at it and then, sh- and then dropped their head in shame. What I remember is the feeling. I remember the feeling. Well, I remember the feeling too. I'm a long-suffering Red Sox fan. 
Yeah. Not, not anymore, yeah. you're not. not no, not, not so anymore. anymore four titles yeah. in, since 04, you're not doing too bad. Uh, but if you look... Damage if you, done. If you look... Yeah, damage done. That's if you not. look at uh, The Ringer, so Bill Simmons started out as a blogger and then got picked up by a local Boston... Uh, local Boston uh, newspaper, and then he ended up joining ESPN. Now, he wanted to start this podcast thing because he's like, listen, people want to listen to us talk, and all we have to do is throw the sponsors in there. Thank right. you, sir. And uh, he, ESPN liked that until Bill Simmons said some not nice things about Roger Goodell, and then he was suspended, and then he's like, whatever. And he started his own network. And I think it's amazing that the technology is such that it's portable, it's high quality, and, and then with the internet, you can now you can now build your audience. You know, and that's the thing. There's a lot of noise out there with the net, but there's also a lot of opportunity there in is. order to do in, in in a way that you can get your message out or you can get your... You know, we that's why we're sitting in this basement, basement right here with all these CDs. It's wall to wall CDs, by the way. And 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 uh posters and, posters. and a lot of a lot of uh you made me sound like a teenager. shitty <laughs> it, there's there's a lot of shitty Yankee stuff in here. And all right, then, okay. Really you know what? We're cutting you off. <laughs> then, no more beer, you're off the mic. <laughs> but no, I, I think that's what it is. You know, it's it's opportunity. It's this. Well, it's the phones. It's just technology that you can. the The technology is there, but not only, not only do you have the technology, you have an entire network in the palm of your hand, and I think that's what makes this so amazing. And and the the podcasts that I enjoy listening to, which are the the last podcast on the on the left, uh. Counting Crows podcast, which is Underwater Sunshine. And if you want to hear, uh, uh, I am a huge Counting Crows fan. As well, I am. Yeah, uh, a lot of people are. My friend Troy Millette and I, we've gone to Counting Crows shows. And uh, my friend my friend Milton Busker, who uh, is just putting out an album, which you need to go listen to. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> whenever, whenever Milton invites me up to sing with him, he's like, what Counting Crow song do you want to do? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'd love to do a Counting Crow song. But <laughs> Underwater underwater Sunshine, Adam Duritz is a professor of music, and he will break down a genre for you. And so whenever... Without shoes. It's so good. Him really? and James Campion, like, you need to go out and listen. If you're looking for a music podcast, the Underwater one. Sunshine podcast I haven't heard of it. is amazing. It's so good, and it's so deep. But I think that's it. You know, it's it's having the technology to do it and, and the listener's ear and the venue to actually have yeah. folks listen it's to you. It's the accessibility and availability of the, the data, the, the medium. But a real quick aside, Counting Crows, speaking of, I've got to think about since we're around my CDs, I've been listening to the Counting Crows, and I'll always remember this. I was in college, so it was 93, September of 93 to June of 94. I remember reading about the Counting Crows in Rolling Stone, and how they were going to be the next big band. And they were, someone gave out, yes, if you pull out my August and everything after. Right there. Which is my favorite album. Al That's my favorite album. My, my school far. was 70, by far. So 70 students. If you open it up, they were giving away CDs that day. And someone won, I, I forgot what it was, but someone won, like, I want to say I won like the George, latest George Thorogood Get a Haircut, Get a Real Job CD or something. And the next person won. Counting crows, and I remember the dean said uh, uh, country country crows, and I said, and he said August and everything after, and I just read about him, and I said, is that counting crows? And he said, yes, it is, and somebody else won it, and I said, I will trade you my George Thorogood that I just won for counting crows. And so Heck to yeah. this day, I have the promotional copy. Mine also of says August and everything copy. after <laughs> from '93, and I've been a fan of counting crows since '93, and I've never oh. seen them. But I've been a fan since '93, which is scary. I've never seen them in person either, and I'm 25 a years big now. Fan. So I can tell fan. you. Does I, anyone remember the first time they were on Letterman by any chance? No, but, that was oh. that same year. Round here, Madonna was on Letterman. I was watching it in college with my roommate Dennis. No, I'm speaking to him twice now. I'll have to try wow. to find him on Facebook. Dennis. Madonna was on, and she was high as a kite, like stoned, because she asked him at one point if he'd ever smoked endo. 
she was super stoned really? and was pa- basically uh, distracting like Letterman was like not, it was not a good interview and she's totally like hogging the the camera the everything but it was there was one guest it was her she was a big name she still is a big name and then Counting Crows and then Counting Crows was on and they played around here and they were absolutely positively phenomenal jaw dropping emotional like took the attention away from Madonna and I'll always remember when I got that CD. And seeing them on TV for the very, very first time playing around here. And it was great because it was not Mr. Jones, which is unfortunately what they're still known for, mm-hmm. even though that's a great song. It's but like, you know, that, Blind this... Melon was another great band who oh, Blind Melon? known for No Rain. I was yes. on the radio. So, sorry, Mouthful of Cavities or, you know. Well, I think I was the on pusher, the radio right? when Shannon, Shannon Hoon passed away. Oh, yeah. When did he pass away? The Pusher, I think. Was, they played a song called The Pusher, but it wasn't Stephanie. So I pusher. did get to live one of my dreams since we've done our last podcast. Uh, my died in ninety five. Okay, never my mind. my friend there, Troy Millette, young young fella who has a show coming up at Nectar's, a pre Thanksgiving show on Wednesday at Nectar's with uh, with his new band. Troy Millette will be playing. In a band, yes, a band. in a band. a band, yes, Whoa. really. Uh, but he invite he. Uh, he invited me at the Bank of uh, Bank of America Pavilion in New Hampshire this summer. He invited me to get up, and we sang on and on uh, before Counting Crows started. So I technically got to you open up for, for Counting, Counting Crows. Crows and live. On that secondary stage. That I remember that. Because cool. we talked about that during one of our last podcasts. We did. Which has been months. It was, well, it was three months ago. Yes. Because it was mid-August, right? That show? Yes. Because we talked about it on our last episode of Riff On which was ancient ago. So we're going around and around and around, of course. But the way, I mean, podcasts have changed, really, I would venture to say since the advent of iPhones and our yeah. technology accessibility and how we're all carrying supercomputers in our pockets at amazing. any given time with amazing data connections. I mean, I'm unlimited data. I'm, you know, I'm, don't tell the DO, you know, the DOC or DOT, I should say, but I'm literally downloading podcasts as I'm driving down the street so I can play them real quick on, through Bluetooth. We don't, we don't, uh, we we don't want you to do that. That's a fine. Sorry. Please stay yeah. off your phones but when you're driving. Don't, don't touch that device. The fact that, and, I would, <laughs> and I'm going to take another venture to or say, Bogart that joint. Yes. So NPR is really puff puff give. NPR is responsible, I think, for bringing podcasts to the mainstream. I would say mainly oh. due to. Oh yeah. Uh, Serial is probably the one that really took the uh, this know, American podcast. life. Took it to a different well, level. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're all taking their shows and making them available as a podcast, which is awesome. Because yes. I mean, you're never li- It's like it's like a DVR for it's your TV. Funny, I went you know many years ago before podcasts kind of took off. I was saying like this is what we should do. We should be recording the shows and making them available live as soon as it ends. Yeah, the second that it ends. And that's exactly what yeah. And bandwidth, that, what NPR started doing. Yeah, bandwidth used to be an arm and a leg. No one could afford it. You know, storage was an arm and a leg. It's just like nowadays, bandwidth. I mean, data is and bandwidth is is you can monstrous. Buy terabyte drives for under one hundred and twenty five dollars. Yeah, that's, it's that's it's sick. It's unbelievable. It's I mean, I just got rid of a hundred and twenty eight gig phone that just you know. Down, I'm now down to 64, but I'm unlimited data, and it's just what you can get instantaneously now. And so I'm I finally two gigs <laughs> launched a podcast. Well, we just, what? I have I have uh, 16 gigs, and I don't want to talk about it because nothing fits on my phone anymore. Well, I have, does, does I have she a, complain it's too small? I have a yeah. great success. No, I do mean you, do you I like make up for it with your car or anything. Or? No, I mean I do have unlimited data, so. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I I can I can't store it, but I can stream it if you know what I'm saying. So yeah, you you've go. been doing. So Mel goes back, let's say, a handful of years. You your podcasting, Andy, goes back before even mine. So we started Riff on last December, so almost a year now. Yeah. And I started my other podcast, Let's Fix Construction, in November. So it's actually been a year. Actually, oh shoot, I never thought we'd to have a celebration episode of that. Yay. We haven't done very many. Is the problem? Ooh. So. What I've learned doing 20 episodes over the last year is, A, I don't want to do them by myself. Because even though I could talk real well for five minutes, ten minutes, it's where I have a true appreciation for for Polly V. I can't do it. Like, I don't want to talk. I don't. 
And I've also learned I've done a lot of presentations and trainings over the years where I know how the human ear and the brain operates. Having a secondary voice or a third voice is extremely important for any sort of delivery because it resets the listener's brain and makes them pay attention. I so prefer I love to be listening. a facilitator. Yeah. Absolutely. Talk radio, ESPN Sports, Mike and Mike in the morning. You know, no, I was no listening to, uh, to VPR, well, NPR. And uh, they were they were talking about music. It was one of their tech podcast or one of their tech shows, and uh, they they literally said that uh, they've done scientific research, and if you as a songwriter you you will help yourself out if every thirty seconds you change up what people are listening to, mm -hmm. because it will make it will reengage them with the song, and so obviously that's that you know sure. that's good for me. Like that's this is good information. Because you don't want to do like the Bob Dylan, uh, uh, the hurricane, you know, as much as you, as much as you like the, the it's a great song, it but is, yeah, you know, seven minutes in. So, yeah. And you're like, hey, uh, you know, it'd well, be really cool. I, uh, I saw Bob Dylan live in concert once for about three minutes and then I fell asleep. Yeah. I, and I, I feel horrible. But it's actually true. I woke up for the applause at the end. Oh man! Well, I've yeah. done. I, you I, must I, have been super high, huh? I've done training, and I've done one of many times. <laughs> I'd say I've done twenty, almost two dozen presentations over the last year, live public presentations with a co-presenter, and our feedback has always been great. But I also know, as an attendee of other presentations, going to an, a national conference that I've attended, a fork construction. The last eight years, you sit through the single uh, person podcast and you realize what a snore fest it can become really quick because if they're not diverse, if they don't have public speaking capabilities, yeah. if they don't have engaging presentation materials, whatever it may be, it gets real old real fast. So it's hard to turn on, let's say, a podcast on just one single solo person. Um, but I really, really think that NPR really kicked it off for podcasting for a lot of people with. Uh, it's got to be Serial, right? That was really the first one. Serial. And they're on Serial season three. Big one, yeah. Serial came out right around the same time as uh, Making a Murderer. Making a, uh, right? Making a Murderer. Right around the same time Netflix did that. And so those, yeah, like, the, the true, episode. The true crime. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. true crime was, like, has really blown up. Uh, because I know this because I love Last Podcast on the Left. And it was, like, this crypto alien conspiracy podcast. And then... They throw a lot of true crime in now because it's just like people people love it, you know. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I, I, funny, I, like I, uh, I'm invested in YouTube a lot lately, and and True Crime Daily is like this channel that um, I don't know if you guys remember the, the the guy in NBC who used to like catch the pedophiles and whatever to catch a predator. Yeah, yeah. So he's on. He's on there. So, yeah, yeah, no, no, John, come in, come in, come and sit down. Uh, I, I understand that you thought I was a 13-year-old boy who was ready to give a little, you know, uh, so come on in. And it's, lessons, yeah. No, 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 you can try to, you can try to go through that door right there, but uh, the thing is, there are, there are policemen, so why don't you come and talk to us, because... Uh, we got sponsors that would really love for you to tell us what's on your mind. <laughs> yeah, for another five more minutes, <laughs> so, if you could do that. <laughs> it's always hard to determine calendars and time the way time is speeding along nowadays. But Serial apparently was fall 2014. Yes. So going back wow, four years really ago now. Ago? Oh, yeah. So I'm on they're on their third. third. And I'm listening to it right now. It's about the Cleveland justice system. And it's incredible because each episode is yeah. pretty standalone. It's super well done. That first They're so well produced. That first season was... So where I got sucked in, and this goes back to NBR, and this goes back to Alex, actually Alex Blumberg, and in, in the, a trending Twitter topic of this week was um, I was starting up actually a, a beer marketing uh, startup called Measured Methods that I did with you, my friend Andy. Uh, yes. And as we were starting up this business, I downloaded a podcast called Startup that I listened to that was uh, based around Gimlet Media. And, season, and Gimlet Media is the producer of Reply All and Homecoming and all of these amazing pr podcasts nowadays. Well, the season one of Startup, which is about starting up a business, which is why I downloaded it, is actually about the founding of Gimlet Media. And it was really, really well done. And the second one that, that spun off was uh, Alex Bloomberg and, and Reply All. Uh, or actually, Alex was in... Is he in... Sorry, the startup itself. Know. But... I'm lost. Yes, I'm sorry. So anybody that follows um, 
well, I should say Twitter and, and podcasts and what have you, there was a great, great trending Twitter topic this week uh, tweeted out by uh, Alex Bloomberg. And it's he goes by Alex Laughs on Twitter right now. And he basically put together a podcast bingo four days ago. He said, I made this because I'm an asshole. But it's a <laughs> podcast bingo. And so um, since I, I mentioned startup real quick, so that was my real big kickoff into podcast was uh, the startup when we were doing Measured Methods, yep. which was, heck, it was 04 because we did the 04 20- or sorry, 14. Sorry. You know, speaking of time flying by, right? It was 04. It was 14-ish, 15-ish because <laughs> we did the 2015, 2016 Vermont Beer Week. Yes. So podcast bingo. So I will read these. Everybody Wait, can knows. I just guess? Sure. I want to guess. Uh, it's going to be uh, stamps.com. It's going to be Blue Apron. Blue Apron. It's going to be... Uh, uh, <laughs> hold on. There are some businesses out there that seem to support every single podcast I listen to. Uh, I don't know. What are we doing here? This is bad radio right now. Mel's <laughs> trying... Mel's bad podcast. flashing me signals and... Uh, a CD, yeah. a cassette, cassette, square, Squarespace. Oh yeah, Squarespace, oh, Squarespace is, is the other yeah, one yeah, for yeah. sure. So that's a, that's and that's a reply all. So Alex and do you know how twenty eight percent of the websites on the internet are hosted by Squarespace, WordPress, yeah. WordPress. WordPress, WordPress, yeah. Is it on well, there? Is it on there? No, that's another one because they have a very user friendly uh, podcast <laughs> template. Okay, so here are the squares. So. We're all over the place, obviously, talking about this, but Alex Bloomberg has a great podcast or technical <laughs> technology based uh, uh, episode or show called Reply All. So he just put out this podcast bingo the other night. So going across. So the first one is Squarespace ad, which is very prevalent in every Reply All episode. So the next one is rate and review on Apple Podcasts. And so, show your friends how to subscribe, too. Yes. Oh, yeah. Which has changed because it used to be iTunes, and now it's Apple Podcasts, Apple a standalone. Podcast, yeah. And it, it, if, you, if you wouldn't mind, if you could please uh, unsubscribe, resubscribe, and give us five, sc- five stars. So this is a new one, and Ryan Rossillo from now he's doing some stuff with, with the, the Ringers. Ringer, yeah. This one. This week on the pod. This God. week on the pod, which is the, the popular there. thing. Oh yeah, <laughs> but I still use podcast because I think pods need a stupider term than podcast. So keyboard tapping in the background. So we haven't been guilty of that. Let's I haven't turned around research. to the keyboard yet. So <laughs> right, telling the yeah. producer to cut something, level, uh, leaving it in. So I'm going to be the producer after this. So we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, so you could cut that. Out. Episode longer than sixty minutes. How long are we at right now? Have you timed it? I can't see my. Time no, I, I'm. I'm. I don't know. Okay. Uh, no producer, we're about 45. Yeah, something we're, like that. that. All I know is we're about two beers, so that's not too bad. Uh, no producer named in credits, so that's not bad. Uh, the uh, next one, in, and I'll edit it because I still want to keep this semi clean. Am I allowed to say F word? Oh, God, yes, is the follow up to that. So yes. that's the next square. A podcast about the hidden forces of TKTK, and I'm not quite sure. Not sure I, I haven't looked up what TKTK is. TK is. Uh, can we get an, uh, Can we get a millennial in here to just translate oh, some of this stuff for us? So a totally, <laughs> totally inappropriate music is a square. Uh, see you next time, even though no one is seeing anyone, of course. So we'll say that at the end of this one. Uh, relatable narration. Um, the middle square is a free have you heard of Reply All because that's his <laughs> podcast. Uh, eight count music post after revealing an interesting fact or thought. Physical descri- descriptions of only women uh, POC. People of color. Politi- I know P- that okay. One. Uh, explanatory comma, which I don't quite understand that, but just two friends talking about pop culture, which is kind of ironic, Andy, because you and I started riff on. I'm pretty sure that's what we were basically trying to do. Thank God now we're three people talking about pop culture and that Mel sits in every once in a while. And thanks for coming on the show. Glad to be here. So we've probably been guilty of that, maybe. Mel's first visit, perhaps. Um, host asks question and answers self with anecdote about own life. Yeah. I think we probably are guilty of that this one. Probably. Uh, Ten minutes of wind up before conversation actually starts. So we've done that today. We- <laughs> uh, I went there with my producer, TKTK. Producer, usually young woman. Uh, plucky banjo music. We're not going to be guilty of that. Maybe. Uh, this we'll see. In capital T H I S. This is show title. So well, we've done that one. Um, all Blue Apron ads have been replaced by Hello Fresh ads. Yes, so there you go, Andy. You got I that told one. you. Right there. And the last one is a cute blooper at the end of the episode after the credits. And Reply All is is, is guilty of that one. And so uh, that is a podcast bingo. And because it's the producer in me, T K T K means uh, more information to come about that. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, so I don't, I don't okay. have all the information. Basically, uh, I'm going gonna... to say something. I'm going to spit it out there, and I don't know if it's real or not, but you know what? We'll check it later, and then in the next podcast, we'll tell you that we're, yeah, we're dumbasses. So, the next podcast, we'll completely forget about that point we said we were going to make, yeah. <laughs> so, so I will, before we do wrap up, I will say, so I finally launched a podcast about a year ago. I was always extremely apprehensive because, like, there's so much content out there. Why? Type of thing. But it's it's not like we're getting sponsors. It's not like we're getting money. Sometimes it's it, you know what it's for us. Truthfully, the three of us, it's been yeah. an excuse to get together and hang out it and is. talk. And even if we have one list, even if we have no listeners, who cares? We're having a good time. But I have found out that it's very very easy to do. You can do it for almost zero money in because you can find a free host. Zero dollars yeah. down. We'll send it to you. Today. Send no money now. No <laughs> money now. Three easy payments of four packs of beer for all of us. There you go. <laughs> but wait, there's, there's more. more. There's more. <laughs> and this Ginsu knife, we're going to include it. I do have a couple I need to get rid of. So You just yeah. made my red light the flash there, Andy. Michael. Easy, easy there on your Sorry, own. man. Uh, well, well, yeah. I told you it was time to wrap up. But... Yeah, well. <laughs> I'm so getting there. If you're interested in starting a podcast, there is, uh, there's an audience for everyone. And, hey, you know, if you're happy with 10 people listening. Give them, a, give them our number and they can call in. <laughs> you're on the air. Listener. Caller. Listener, Hi, yeah. I really like to start a podcast on knitting. Long time. First time. So before, coincidentally, after uh, so, go, people do that. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a short time. I was actually I was just driving through your town and, and uh, I happened to hear your radio station. And I thought you were full of shit, so I figured I'd just call in and just did be I, like, "What the heck is going did I on? Win? Is it a, is <laughs> it a contest? What did I win? Yeah, um, I got this. Why did you dial if you don't know? <laughs> Why so our friend Polly V does a great podcast called Off the Table. And the, before I actually launched uh, the, my Let's Fix Construction podcast or this one, I actually guested with him and it was about podcasting and how to start a podcast. And I grabbed the link and I put it up on YouTube. His uh, archives fall off quickly because he doesn't pl uh, pay to play, if you will. But if you go to YouTube and actually put in Off the Table um Eric D and Polly V podcasting. You'll actually find the archive. And it's actually about setting up a podcast and how oh, well. easy it can actually be. You don't need to jump in with a bunch of fancy microphones yeah. and, and production and limiters and, and what have you. I realized I bought a $600 Zoom recorder <laughs> and I only use it for when we get together because I can actually record uh, all by myself right to my computer for free with Audacity, which is a free program, which I'll edit this on. So there's lots of and there's free, free services you can get right on your phone, like uh, Anchor, Spreaker. There's uh, an app for that. There's an app. Yeah, there, imagine there's there an app really for that. Is. Anchor, but there's actually podcasting apps. One of them yeah. is called Anchor. If you want to be horrible, you can even do it on your voice memo. I mean, right. You know, it means that you might not be able to edit anything later. But right. you remember how Scott Weiland uh, with the STP, you would always sing through the uh, the the bullhorn. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I want to podcast like that sometime. Well, for I, you. We'll never. We can ever. do that. <laughs> I'd have to sit. I'd have to sit down there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like uh, about thirty yards away. I realized recently how much I liked Wyland and how upset I am. I never saw him in concert as a front man because I always thought he was fantastic. He's so like We can't. We can't go there though because it's yeah. It's, so wait, it was were a loss. Were you gonna? Were you about to plug your podcast? Or well, no, not necessarily. Like so I started up. Well, let's fix construction and this one riff on because I wanted one recreationally where we could just talk about whatever. We would get together and hang out, have a beer. Unfortunately, it's the only time we see each other now is when we're seem uh, almost seemingly when we're doing the podcast and once every three months right now. We've, we've yeah. hung out I feel once like or twice three... since then. Yeah, I haven't yeah, seen you three... since you the have. Fairfax been, Brewfest is the last time I saw you. Unfortunately, doing other stuff. Brewing, podcasting, Brewing, Grado podcasting. 2. I mean, talk about you just made a pivot oh, sure, with Grado yeah. 2. And you might so, as well talk about yeah, it. Yeah, so, so Grado 2 started out as a podcast, but I just felt like it wasn't headed in the right direction. Um, and really what I wanted to do is I wanted to add visuals, and I'm like, I can't do this as a podcast. So I just relaunched it as a YouTube channel. I like so, it. So Grado 2, GR802. And uh, I can't promise that you'll see anything interesting, but uh, the first three videos are up, and they're basically a test of the equipment and the editing software uh, but i have gone now to a couple of locations i'm going to several uh tomorrow and then uh, within the next couple of weeks i'm going to be going to at least two or three more so i'll be having some pretty awesome locations around vermont that you can find out and 
the stuff that's great in the 802. Great O2. I like it. And you do on the side occasionally your yeah. podcast. I make cookies. <laughs> what? No, your podcast. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Local Haunt with Carrie Henry. Uh, we will, I think we're going to try to figure out how to get some new pods up in the next three months. You just use pods. Did you just say pod? We need to have a talk. On the pod. Jeez. On the pod. Next on the pod. Uh, Shout out Ryan Rosillo. We do, yeah. <laughs> Dual threat. That's this a good is, one. I've actually listened uh, to the first ringer, couple of them. Yeah. It's his new ringer podcast. Uh, UVM alum, so keeping it in state. That's what's cool about Ryan. Uh, Plus, he's a great broadcaster. Great voice. Uh, yeah, we do uh, we do the local haunt. That's mainly on Facebook. We have a uh, SoundCloud as well. That you can go That's to. a good way to host a podcast. I'm saying it, it's it very, very easy to um, basically launch a podcast. And as a matter of fact, the low watt radio station in Burlington, not the radiator, the uh, non for profit. WWMP? No. No. Oh, no. No. Um, oh, gosh. WJOY? No, no, no. No, but, that's. But, uh... Um, I, I, w don't touch me there. I forget who it is, but they're actually doing a second how to launch a podcast with uh, Jonathan Butler from VPR, mm-hmm. where he t- he hosts uh, basically a, a presentation live about how to launch your own podcast, yeah, so which is coming up. Low power station that's in Burlington. Um, unfortunately, I had a conflict because I had just been hired by a for profit station as I was about to go down there and help train people on how to be on the radio. And I said, this may be a conflict. And, and uh, the for-profit that hired me agreed that it was. So <laughs> WBKM? No, that's Burlington Sky that's, Music. So yeah. they're online only, WBKM.org. Uh, um, what's the one in actually, Waterbury? Is it w, WWLP or WMLP? Uh, I know the low power, the LP, I feel, is in the um, – is in the call letters for it. Carry him scrambling, trying to look real quick. 99.3. Is that it? WBT, WBTV? Yes. That should be it. Yes. Underwriters, Burlington Telecom. So WBTV. So 99.3 WBTV.org. So they get an upcoming class, oh, I know, on how to okay. host a uh, podcast with Jonathan from, uh, from VPR. It's really easy to do. I... Find a friend to talk about, though, to talk with, I should say, because it, it goes a long way. Because you lose yourself sometimes in timing, right? It's good. Good? It's good, uh, man. WB, WBTV-LP is what they started calling themselves yes. when they launched. That's yes. why. Okay. Yes. yes. So, hey, we get to uh, hang out, drink some really good beers. This I, last one, since we didn't I talk know. about it, was uh, Bent Hill's Gracious Thoughts from Braintree, who got how much snow today? 4.25 inches. Jeez. Yes. Yeah. That's crazy. I remember those stats. Useless things. That's what... Well, that was just wow. earlier tonight, though. So it's a <laughs> Juniper Berry Chaga Imperial Black IPA. That was really it good. It was really good. So, you know... It, Very it, good. We, uh, we've all been cured from cancer if we've uh, had that, I think. Generously Jai hopped with Citra and Mosaic, so that always helps. Yes. That's good. Every beer. Yes. But that was fantastic. Um, Big fan of Mosaic. Me too. Yeah, yeah it's great. Hop. I I enjoy the new hops, the ones. Yes, I love complexities. I yeah. love fruity hints. I've, I've discovered with Chinook, there's a level where you can overdo it. Yeah, all of a sudden, yeah, Chinook's yeah. a little iffy. It's, un- yeah. it's unfortunate. Yeah. Good, good to a point. One of, overdone. One of the five C's. All of a sudden. I'm going to run out of this room in just about Cast three. Oh, Andy's got to pee. <laughs> I got to uh, pee. Here thanks, we go. Thanks, Patty so. McBlady yeah, in the house. I don't have... <laughs> Uh, a beer fridge, and I also don't have a little urinal in the podcast studios there's, as there's of yet. No loo in the Where's I? I was looking for the mason jar I Sorry. used last time, but so, I don't see it. Thanks for listening to the pod. We're not sponsored by anybody. This has been a lot of fun. But we'd we, love if you wanted to sponsor yes, us. If you want to throw money at us or beers, beers, we'll take it. Otherwise, brought to you by beer. This is a lot of fun. Um, who are you? Uh, Andrew James. Who are you? Mel Allen. The Real Voice Mel on and Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. I'm Eric D. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to the Riff On Podcast, episode number 10 on podcasting and radio, it turned out to be, too. Radio, <laughs> podcasting, broadcasting. We all have faces for microphones or radio <laughs> behind microphones. I think behind I'm quite microphone. sexy. You're bringing sexy back. Thanks for tuning in. Did, it ever, did it ever leave? <laughs>